All right, let's welcome Matthew Dix to the stage, everybody. When I was a kindergartner, I hated gym class. I hated it in first grade, and I hated it in second grade. I hated gym class my entire elementary and middle school career. Now that I'm a teacher, I understand I hated it because of the curriculum. But if you had asked me back then, I would have told you that I hated it because it sucked. <laughs> and that would have been correct too. And for good reason. My elementary gym class, we had four basketball hoops set on the walls. Yet I never got to shoot a single ball into one of those hoops. We had bounce pass drills, chest pass drills, dribbling drills, but we never actually played basketball. Instead, we used hula hoops. We used hula hoops more than anything else in the gym arsenal. We hula hooped around our waists and around our arms. We learned to roll the hula hoop across the gym. We learned to add backspin to the hula hoop. To this day, I can send a hula hoop 50 feet across the room and get it to come back to me. And I still can't find a reason to do that. Even my four-year-old daughter is not impressed with this skill. And parachutes somehow became a gym implement where we would all hold the parachute and shake it like this is exercise. And then the worst part is we would all throw it to the ceiling and then pull it down behind us, encapsulating us in this dome that slowly descended upon us. As a person who is highly claustrophobic, this was not good. The only worst part was I'd look around and all my friends were smiling as we were slowly being smothered by this parachute. It was like being in a plane flying right into a mountain and everyone is laughing the whole way in. But the worst part about gym was calisthenics and my school district took those very seriously. Beginning in kindergarten and all the way through sixth grade, every exercise was exactly the same for the exact number of repetitions. They would put us in the gym, rows and columns, by alphabetically by last name, and they would do the same exercises every single week so that I still know the routine to this day. The gym teacher would stand in front and he would say, 25 jumping jacks, ready, go. And we would all do 25 jumping jacks in unison, and then windmills, and then push-ups, and then up on the left leg for 60 seconds, and up on the right leg for 60 seconds. We all did these exercises exactly the same, like we were tiny little Marines. <laughs> and the last exercise in calisthenics was sit-ups. It was the only one we didn't do in unison because you needed a partner. You were allowed to break formation for a moment. And my partner for seven years was John because he was always alphabetically behind me. Now, John was a big kid. He was fat, actually. He was fat in the 1980s. Today, we would just consider him slightly large. <laughs> Things have changed a bit, but John was fat, and John was not athletic. And John was always my partner. And the trouble with sit-ups is everyone knew who the last sit-up person was going to be because everyone returned to their positions and waited. And John was always the last one doing sit-ups. And so over the years, he started shaving sit-ups off his requisite 50. And I didn't say anything, because I didn't want to make fun of John, because I was not, I didn't have a lot going for me either. I weighed about 104 pounds, but my head was exactly this big, which is actually very large, if you can notice. And my teeth stuck out of my mouth at a 90 degree angle, <laughs> because I sucked my thumb until I was six. Thanks, mom and dad. They were so bad that a minister stopped us on the street and asked if he could donate the money for my braces so that my teeth could be fixed. I was like a giant bobblehead woodchuck. <laughs> and so I was not about to make fun of John. And so I didn't say anything about him shaving sit-ups. Till one day, our gym teacher, Mr. Bougery, a short, bald, therefore angry man, <laughs> called us over after sit-ups, and he said, Matt, how many sit-ups did you do? And I thought, oh, John's dead. And I said, 50. And then he said, John, how many did you do? And John said, 50. And I couldn't believe it, 
because I had been a kid who was always in trouble. So I was like in the principal's office in first grade, and I knew that when you are busted, you tell the truth. You admit to things you haven't actually done in order to get out of trouble. What is this kid thinking? But John had never, ever been in trouble before, and I could see he was panicking. And so Mr. Bougerie said, fine, come see me at recess. And I walked away, and he said, both of you. And I was mad because I had a soccer game that day, and I was the goalie on the team, and I was a terrible goalie. And I knew if they had found someone to replace me for the day, they would discover how bad I was, <laughs> and I would lose my position on the soccer team. And so we came back after recess, John and I, and we stood in front of Mr. Bougerie, and he said again, how many sit-ups did you do, Matt? And I said, 50. And he said, no, you did 51. And I thought, I am really dealing with an ass here. <laughs> and then he asked John, how many sit-ups did you do? And John said, 50. And Mr. Bougerie said, no, you did 28. And he said, you're supposed to work as a team. Were you counting for each other? And I wanted to say, you jackass. This kid weighs like 200 pounds. He is sweating. He is red-faced. He is grunting through every sit-up. No, I didn't count for the kid. And Mr. Bougerie said, fine, go to your position and do sit-ups for the entire recess, 50-50. And as I watched John do those sit-ups, I started not to like John anymore. I thought about where I should have been and why I was here. And that kid who I used to give a break to and not think of as fat suddenly became fat to me. And the next day at recess, when they asked me why I wasn't playing soccer, I said, it's because fat John can't do sit-ups. And somebody laughed. And so I said it again, and I said it again. And John became fat John. I realized that I wasn't born a bigot and a bully, but it didn't take very much to turn me into one. Thank you.